vegetable rack. Vegetables. I'm having lots of vegetables for my dinner today. And some pickled onions. Do you like pickled onions? I love them because they're very, very vinegary. Vicar. What else can you see that starts with the same sound? Five little peas in a pea pod pressed. One grew, two grew, and so did all the rest. They grew and grew and did not stop until one day the pod went pop. <laughs> there are lots of different types of vegetables. Cabbage, lettuce, cucumber, carrots, radishes, onions. One place with a huge variety of vegetables is London's Brixton Market. And Tommy Eitel took some children on a visit. Brixton Market, you never been there. I'm gonna tell you what I've seen. There's streets and arcades, we chop and stall, hustle and bustle, and traders call. I'm John Harry. I got fried salt bay. I got mozzarella snapper. What you got? I got best friend Molly. What you got? I got no crappy. What you got? I got prawns and clams. The market, if you've never been there, I'm gonna tell you what I've seen there. Street and arcade with shop and store, hustle and bustle and traders call. What jelly pepper? What you got? I got scallion and tomatoes. What you got? I got fried juicy mango. What you got? I got green banana. What you got? I got fine fresh ginger root. What you got? I got yam very cheap today. Okay. looks like when it's on the tree. Oh, there we go. See how happy it is. You feel that? Well, now, what they do is they cut the skin off, and you wind up with what's inside, which is, let me see if I can reach it. Yes. Here we've got the inside of the coconut. And you can see what's happening in there. It's hardened. And, ah, oh, there's a taste piece of that. Mm. And what they do is they, they grind it into little pieces and they can use it to make dishes, put it with rice, put it with any sort of, or just eat it like that. Now who's going to have a little taste of this? Right? What do you think about it? That's one. Got show your head back. Mm. Mm. Very nice. Now here we are. You try this and see what you think now. So you didn't like it? Let me let me have a taste there. Mmm. Beautiful. Mangoes. Anybody had a mango before? Yes. We get that bit there. And then very expertly, like I'm doing, you peel it off. You get these nice little slices. Now, 
what I'm gonna do is give each of you a little slice. Yum. Like it? Yeah. Like it? Yeah, it tastes funny. Who else wants some more? Like a page. Little lot though. You want some more? All right, you'll get some more. You got okra here. Have you seen the okra? Yeah. Now these you can steam or boil. They call them ladies' fingers. And they say it's very good putting in your hair. You have a feel of that. It is slimy. Isn't it? Now here we've got sweet potatoes. And they're just like our potatoes, but you can boil them, bake them, you know, put them in the oven. You can even put them in the microwave. And they really are yummy. That's why they're called sweet potatoes. There's a story from the Caribbean about Anansi the spider. He loved sweet potatoes. It's called Why Anansi the Spider-Man Makes Webs. One day, Anansi got together with his friends here and Rat and planted a field of sweet potatoes. They dug the ground, planted the sweet potatoes in neat lines and waited for them to grow. Every day they would go to the field and pull out any weeds that tried to choke the tender young shoots. Of course, Anansi always made some excuses as to why he couldn't work and usually spent the day lazing on the grass, watching hare and rat working in the hot sun. Eventually, the time approached when the crop could be harvested, and hare and rat arranged to meet Nancy the next morning at the field. That night, though, Nancy crept down to the field and dug up some of the sweet potatoes, put them in a sack, and hid it near his home. In the morning, when the three met, Hare and Rat noticed that part of the field had been freshly dug. But Anansi pretended not to notice. As usual, Anansi made an excuse saying he had a sore back and couldn't work, and sat down to rest in the shade. While they worked, Hare and Rat decided that they would watch the field that night to see if the thief returned. When half the field had been harvested, Hare and Rat decided to call it a day. They waved goodbye to Anansi and said they hoped that his back would be better in the morning so that he could help with the work. As soon as Anansi was out of sight, Hare and Rat ran back to the field and hid themselves in a bush. After a few hours, they began to think that they were wasting their time. No thief is foolish enough to return to the scene of his crime so soon, said Hare. Let's go home. I'm tired. Maybe you're right, said Rat. Let's forget it. But just as they were about to leave, they spotted a shadowy figure approaching. Quick, hide, said Hare. We'd catch him in the act. So they ducked down behind the bush again and watched as the figure started to dig up the sweet potatoes. Then they crept quietly towards him. When they were right behind him, Rat shouted, Caught you, you miserable thief! At this, the robber spun round in surprise. And Nancy cried here, You are the thief! Here and Rat were both so surprised that Nancy had time to make a run for it, but they soon recovered themselves and gave chase. Before long, Hare and Rat started to gain on Anansi, who wasn't a very fast runner. But just then he saw a large tree ahead, and he leapt up into the branches and clambered up to the top where he sat, trembling with fear. Hare and Rat couldn't climb trees, so they stood at the bottom looking up angrily at him. You wait, Anansi, said Rat. When you come now, we'll give you what for. You can't stay up there forever without food. When morning came, Rat went home for a rest, leaving Hare to guard the tree.
Later, he returned to allow here to go home for a while. From his branch, Anansi watched these comings and goings with dismay. His stomach began to rumble and he looked around for something to eat. But the tree was bare. Oh, why didn't I choose a mango tree to climb instead of this old stump, he thought. As the hours passed, Anansi grew more and more worried. He even considered giving himself up. But Hare and Rat were still very angry with him, and he soon thought better of it. There must be something I can eat, Anansi said to himself. Then he spotted a few flies buzzing around nearby. And to the starving Anansi, even they began to look delicious. So he thought up a way to catch them. By spinning a web. And that is why spiders still weave webs to this day. Eventually, Hare and Rat got fed up with waiting at the bottom of the tree and told the Nancy they would forgive him as long as he promised never to steal from them again. I wonder what happened to the field of sweet potatoes. They would have needed a van to carry all those vegetables home. Van. Vegetable van. Volcano. Vegetables. Vegetable van. Vegetable van. Both these words start with the same letter. Watch how Magic Pencil writes it. Down. vegetables. <laughs>